over here. Hi, my name is Scott Buckingham. I'm a Philly-based flight attendant. And Philly has been, to me and to a lot of my colleagues, the black sheep of the, since the merger. We, granted, we've got new de destinations, which we were very excited about, and it was on the 7.6. And then we were so excited when we heard a few months ago that the 787 is coming to Philly in three destinations, Zurich, Amsterdam, and Manchester. And then we just found out less than a month ago that that's changed again that now Manchester is going to go back to a 7-6. And as you know, Philly is the only city that we fly to Manchester because we pulled out of Chicago and out of New York. And we went from an A330 to a 7-6, which was reduced capacity. Uh, our passengers, I fly that all the time. Yep. That's my city. And the first a business class passenger that did fly that all the time that I'm on a first name basis with are not happy for this reason of the entertainment system and the seats and just that it's an old airplane. And when, when we, as flight attendants, when we found out we we're going to have the 787, we're promoting this all summer long. Don't worry. It's going to a 7.8. It's going to be great. Oh, really? Cool. <laughs> and then we find out that starting in April, it's going back to a 7.6. Zurich's going to an A330, which is a great airplane. Right. And the only 787 is Amsterdam. What's, I understand we're flying new, starting new flights to New Zealand, but that season doesn't start until October, November. Why are we losing the 787 again? Does it make any sense? Going back to my friends, Jess, Jason, All what right. happened? Uh, um, understand, and we would like to keep consistent um, product on there as best we can. In this case, um, you know, we chose Manchester over the other two routes for the 76, just given the amount of business traffic that is on the other two versus on Manchester. Um, we didn't want to do that. We, we would love to keep them on what we have. Um, hopefully we're, well, we will be out of the 76 in a year and then we won't have this problem. But that, that's what drives it. It's truly plain. So that's right. I get another year of explaining this to my customers this summer. So well, that's what we're in the business of customer service. And it's just, it's just disheartening that these people that you do know and you do meet and they're on a first, cla first name basis. Hey, how are you good to see you again? So and so drink. Don't even have to ask them so they know, they know what they want. But then when you tell them that, you know, they're executive platinums that it's going to go be a 7-6 for the summer again. Sorry, that's the way it is. So I, it's just very disheartening for us in Philly because we, since the merger, have basically been the bottom of the barrel to speak of since we've had the FOI and we've lost flights to the legacy AA, which was fine. It's until the merger, but just seems that we're always being whatever. To be fair though, one of the things, I remember when I first uh, came to Philly probably three years ago, that was a point where Philly was losing some international flying and I, um, I know that really over the last, and people were asking me, is Philly going to still exist? Do you need Philly anymore as a base? And I, I hope over the last year that you've seen, as you mentioned, you've gotten a lot, a lot of people are jealous of Philly <laughs> in this room because of all the new international destinations um, you've gotten. But your point is totally spot on. I'm hearing loud and clear that we need to come up with a better answer for the PEDs, the personal entertainment devices right. and business class, and I will provide a follow-up. It's just the airplane in general. That's, no, that's, I know, yeah. and uh, you know, maybe we can't solve that for a year, but we can try and make what we have on it work better, so I appreciate that feedback. Okay. Yeah, and look, and, and, and look, and, th and thanks for your comments, because they're on behalf of our customers, and we appreciate it. Um, this is a challenge for us. I would, I would just ask us all to recognize this. Um, that aircraft, once we have that aircraft out of here, um, we will, uh, anyway, our, our fleet already is so much better uh, than other, our other large U.S. carriers. Um, but, you know, and we now, we got the seven, we got this, we got the Super 80s retired, which is a bittersweet thing, but not bittersweet for our customers. Uh, that airplane, you know, is, is now uh, retired. The 767 uh, is being retired. The, the challenge is, you know, we either choose to retire them now. They, so anyway, they have to, if we want to fly the schedule we fly, we need to fly the 7.6s until we have new airplanes to replace them. So we can either pull down the schedule, which none of us wants to do, um, or we fly those airplanes, and, and Jason and his team work very hard to figure out uh, the least painful spot to the company um, for those airplanes right now. Um, the, the right answer, of course, is to make those airplanes 
uh, they're always going to be it's always going to be the least painful spot. It doesn't mean that the that the, the, the in flight entertainment shouldn't work. Of course not. But even so, it's that, that airplane doesn't is not the same customer product as you know triple sevens and seven eight sevens and a three thirties, which are coming. So anyway, um, we we got thanks for raising this. This is again heightening awareness uh, for me. Uh, that, that we really need to make sure that we don't just milk these airplanes um, you know, into, you know, of what's left of them and that we actually make sure that we're providing the right level of service to our customers while we have to have them. Uh, but yeah, know that there's a day out there where they are gone to, uh, like the Super 80s. And, um, and, and again, our, other, the, our competitor airlines have to deal now with what we've dealt with. Uh, we have, in this airline, we now have over half of our airplanes are less than 10 years old. Um, we have uh, not a single aircraft in the system over 25 years old. Um, only 10% of our airplanes in this, in this airline are over 20 years old. Um, that number, you know, 10% of our fleet, it's 33% for United and Delta. Um, so, and that 10% is the 767. Um, so as those go away, or, and some 75s, as those go away, um, you know, we, we, I feel really good about where our fleet is. But we gotta, we gotta, we gotta get these airplanes to their, to the rest of their useful life, their necessary life, in a way that you're not having to apologize for it. So let's keep working on that. I, I, I really, I got it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move around because we got to think. I, I heard you loud and clear. Thank you. 